Hey there, Aspen Knights. It's John Oates here. Here we are at Grassroots, and you know what? This place has been going for 50 years, and as I look around, it could really use an upgrade. So please be generous, support Grassroots and their fun drive to uh, really make this place look a little cooler. Uh, it actually looks really cool. Maybe it should look more modern. No, that would be terrible. Just make it look better. Help support Grassroots. You know you love it. Support your community. There's a lot you can do in this town. You set it up and turn it around. We might have come from somewhere else, but this is where we found ourselves. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Welcome to another edition of the local show, our first of the new year, guys. Happy New Year on that note. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Thanks so much for joining us each week where we feature inspirational locals here in Aspen, Colorado from up and down the Roaring Fork Valley. Really excited and honored to have some first-time guests, longtime friends, 45-year owners of Paradise Bakery. The last 40 years here in Aspen, we've got Danny and Mark Patterson, brothers in arms yeah. and business, <laughs> pretty much everything else. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for Thanks. having us. Thank you. Finally, we've been trying to put this together for a while, and you guys have just been rocking and rolling and had signed your 10-year lease extension. We'll talk about some of those things uh, throughout the show. But, guys, how about the start to the new year and kind of start to winter? Danny, just some thoughts on, like, the snow. Great, sir. I'm a little guilty, I have to tell you, because I was in Austria over Christmas. Oh. And I missed the great snow here. And okay. we had good snow over there, and we had a great time, great family time. But I came back. Oh, about five days ago. So okay. I'm getting part of this, yeah. Okay, so you got to get the tail end of the storm kind right, of thing. Right, right. But, but it's I mean, thoughts fabulous. About oh, my God. Conditions. To get out there and skin up or ski has been wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where do you like to skin up? I like to go up either Tayak or um, maybe Highlands up to Merry Ground. Nice. Like yeah. Nice, nice. And how about you, Mark? Like, start to the season. It was a good run. I mean, hit before Christmas and, yeah. and warm. A little colder, a little colder. Yeah. Ten days of it finished off with as, as good as it gets. So oh. never any better. There was a time, it was Christmas Day, actually. And appropriately, it was biblical. <laughs> Back in Highland Bowl, 28-inch powder day because they had not opened the day before. And we had two snowfalls that equal 28 inches, and it was every bit of that. And what was interesting, though, when they finally dropped the rope, it was after 2 o'clock. But patrol was like determined. It's Christmas. We didn't get it open yesterday. Yeah. We're gonna bomb it, cut it, work our butts off. We're gonna get this thing open today, even if we have to keep it open later. So they opened at like two fifteen, and about maybe seventy five people were gathered. You know, all hardcore locals at the main gate. But what happened was about ten of us who were on skins followed the beautiful skin track up. There was no boot pack. <laughs> so almost everyone was hiking, and they went right up to like waist deep. Like and you got post hauling, <laughs> and we're about halfway across. I don't know if you guys know uh, Jan. Um, I'm trying to think of his last name, uh, St Stosel or something. But anyway, he's up there all the time and um, longtime Aspen guy. And he goes, Scarvin, Scarvin, look back, and we're going up the steep pitch. We look back; these guys were at least 300. They haven't even come around wow. the rock outcropping yet, and we were way off the front. So, to say the least, dropping it off the peak was epic. Epic, and it was like I was looking for Moses, literally, like. Charlton Heston standing there with his staff, like parting the uh, full curl or whatever. It was so biblical. But that was one of the days I was able to get out and really enjoy this uh, start to the season. And I'll tell you, it was such a glorious Christmas to be able to experience. One of the best powder days of my life, frankly. And that's, wow. I think, saying a lot being here now for 40 years wow. this year. So, wow. um, you know, just what a treat. No, what a treat and what a great start to the year. No, that's what makes it here in Aspen. It's not the big five foot dumps. It's the the, the these sessions, and if yeah. they go three, five, seven, ten days, then they're just uh, there's nothing like it. It anymore. was raining like two days before Christmas. That set down the that base. That was so crazy. It's perfect. And then it just perfect. got yeah, finally got cold, and then it just start hammering on us. And no, it was good. It was good for business. And yeah, yeah. So how was the vibe like at Paradise through the? 
kind of the main Christmas week, you know, Christmas to New Year's, all the snow, all the people in town. Like, what was that feeling like? Like, Danny, when you got back and... It's it, magical. I mean, really, when, when you put this together, this town, with the snow in it, when, when that light yeah. comes and lights it up, and all the twinkle lights, and oh. you see crowds of people. There, Mark will attest to this. There'll be a, a group of 10 come walking in the door all at once, you know. There was huge parties <laughs> this year, just huge. <laughs> and they started kind of shopping the 22nd you know, 21st, and then just ramping up that um, they were in the streets. They'd taken over the whole place, and <laughs> the skiing was getting good. It was still the wet snows, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. they weren't really, um, they were busy shopping. And right. then after that, people got out skiing, and so we got some pretty good crowds going up there, but spread out, it was just amazing. Like these big family gangs, you know, big, roaming downtown big Aspen. Big family <laughs> deals. But, but Aspen, you know, you, you see how great. they enjoy it. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes they, oh, some, oh, the tourists are here and all. But to see their eyes light up and they come with their bags and they do, I mean, it, Aspen really is a neat place for the visitors to come yeah. to. And as yeah. I travel around the world, you know, they all ask about it. They either know about it or they've been there. And they, and so, I mean, it's, it's neat, though, to come home and see that in action. But to get great yeah. skiing. I mean, I know they come for a lot of reasons, family and all that this time. But then right, what was it, the 23rd or so when all the mountains were open and everything was, you know, and, the, and 1A was open. So all of a sudden, now everybody had everything they wanted. Right. I mean, everybody right. spread out perfectly and it was private skiing for everybody. So it was oh, amazing. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, the timing couldn't have been any better. Actually, the timing going into Thanksgiving. You know, we hadn't had snow for 10 yep, or 11 yep. days. Finally got it right before Thanksgiving. And that's the other thing about Aspen. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but it seemed like when we really, really need the snow, we pretty much get it like nine times like the out of night ten. before. Like yeah. almost like magic. Like yeah. when you really crunch time oh. and we get it. And it's just like pre-Thanksgiving, Christmas, yeah. spring break. Yeah. Um, so that's that's part of the hardest magic. thing was I knew I had to work every day and I had to <laughs> get out there and get that and then come yeah. back in and justify that. All right, got you got to squeeze, you got to carve know, out that was time. An hour and a half, but yeah. you can get a lot of skiing and a lot of powder skiing in. So. Well, guys, we're going to carve out a quick break. We're only okay. going to be away for a couple minutes. It's our only break of the show. Chance to rehydrate, and we're going to get your Aspen story, how you ended up here, Danny, for you in the '60s. So I want to hear about that. So we do want to thank our winter underwriters for making uh, great shows like the Patterson Brothers here from Paradise Bakery happen all winter long. We have Gonzo Nation, Highlands Ale House, Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Obermeyer, Pickin County Landfill, and last but not least, Sundog Athletics. Guys, we'll be right back with Danny and Mark. How do you run a business in downtown Aspen for over 40 years, guys? And so much more. Don't go away. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of the local show and grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. I'm Klaus Obermeier, and I wish you a terrific winter on the Aspen Mountains. <laughs> Locally owned and located at the base of Aspen Highlands, Highlands Ale House features delicious scratch-made comfort food, cocktails, beer, and more. Their sunny outdoor deck is ski in, ski out. 
two miles from Aspen. They're open daily, winter and summer. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. We're back here on the local show. Happy New Year's. Guys, we have the Pattersons in the house from Paradise Bakery. You guys, I have to say, you are so generous. I'm just, I hadn't really thought about this until just now it hit me. But you supported like my canine uphill event for over 20 years with muffins and bakery. And I know you guys, and you supported the local show uh, this last summer as underwriters. And it seemed like you're really like community involved. Um, I just want to start with that and just say thank you. And I guess just brief thoughts before we get your Aspen story. Uh, Mark, what is that, you know, kind of community involvement? How does that play into your life? And <laughs> I mean, kind of talk about the importance well, of that. Well, it started 40 years ago. You know, the first cause, somebody would come from the school and need something for this or that and yeah. donate a few cookies. And, and you know, in, in 40 years, you've got 100 organizations in town that do things. And what what better way to, to put on their events than, than cookies? Yeah. And it's also been something that's been easy to give away you know it's we've got people working we've got people baking it's you know it's 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 not the cost of the cookies and we get them out there and and they make people happy yeah. just a natural and I, and I think what's happened is we've just never said no <laughs> i don't think we've said this is no. making me happy right now i can tell you and danny something about a cookie right i mean just cookies seem to bring smiles it's you like, know it's a funny it's thing like a about joyful that, thing Eric, because in this business, as we grew it over the years, we could not have been in a better business. Our business card that you probably have one on the back is a free cookie. Yeah. Yeah. And I could be in some big meeting with developers or something. At the end, I'd say, well, guys, I hand my card. And they'd get so excited over a cookie on the back of that card. <laughs> it, What's something about it? it? You know, if we were in some other business, we couldn't do it. So we've, we've gotten a lot of pleasure of doing that. And it also, I think, it, it spreads our goodwill. And it, it kind yeah. of ke- ties in real quickly with, you know, two things. We want to take care of our employees the best we can, our customers in the same way. But we really want to be a part of the community. And with Mark's time here, uh, longer than I have been, it's the, we've done that. And it's, it's just a part of our soul. When, yeah. when we went to think of not extending our lease, we thought, we can't do that. We have, we have to be able to give this away. Maybe we, I don't know, maybe we flash, this is a longer conversation, but maybe we flash back to childhood, like the cookie thing. Like it's almost, I don't know, there's some things that I think connect us back to that bring us that kind of childlike joy. You know, for me, it's riding a fat bike, it's sledding, you know, you just like start giggling. A cookie, you start giggling, it's just, I think that some of it's connecting and releasing our inner child, but um, some of that must have happened when you moved here in the 60s, right? I mean, to release like your youth your inner child your inner skier and you well, know mom used to make it? chocolate chip cookies for our ski trips when we oh, were okay. still in california driving the six hours and <laughs> and you had to have chocolate chip cookies and and okay uh, there you go one cookie ten cookies would they just evolve but it has become <laughs> a thing i mean I, I don't go to the miners building without a box of cookies wherever oh i forgot my cookies take my cookies <laughs> go to the dentist go to the doctor get a get a uh, you know knee replacement bring your cookies and, and people be, are probably expecting pe- those cookies oh, after a while oh, like hot, mark hot, you don't yeah, have any yeah. cookies <laughs> yeah. like then you're get called out probably so right? that's the reason we're still in business right <laughs> we didn't know how we were afraid people wouldn't like us without the cookies <laughs> <laughs> so how did you let's start with you then mark like how did you initially land in aspen what was your connection was it through childhood vacations well it started here you know dan yeah we had we had vacations and we had been coming here in the 60s with uh my parents and then danny took a trip by himself out and he can tell how how yeah. that went and spent a winter here in Aspen. Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, the, I mean, it's a pretty simple family story, but it's kind of neat. Is that in 65, uh, I was in college, and I was skiing on weekends at home in Southern California, and I decided that when I, I came here for Christmas, and I'd never been here, a friend of mine and I came, and it was just epic snow. Um, we could get into all the three-two bars. We could enjoy the <laughs> night, skied every day for nine days. I went home, and I said to my parents, I said, I'm going to go back, take, drop out of school. I'm going back for the season in Aspen. And so a month later, I got on the Greyhound bus and ended up in Aspen 
with my skis and a little bag and got a job at the Pinocchio's. Oh, my gosh. For Don Fleischer and Dave Fleischer, who owns, you know, Picking County now. We worked as waiters. I skied three months here, fell in love with Aspen. I said to my – I made a little note, someday I'm going to live there. Then I went back to the real world, back to school and, and, and all, and uh, went home told my folks about it. And eight years later, when Mark graduated from high school, they ended up moving here. And you can tell that story. But that – so then oh, – And at one time, we all ended up in the same piece of property on Cemetery Lane. It was um, Gray Walls. Well, before that, we were in the Tipple – Right about where the third generation or, or whatever has been there now, where Slomos was most recently. Oh, yeah. And we yeah. were in that Tipple condo for. Oh, my gosh. I think they got that in the late 60s, and that's where we moved, I moved in in 73. But, you know, it was. Um, I, I, I remember when my father retired, he had a, a lot in Tahoe, Prescott. Sedona, and and Aspen. We had the, and he had this, gotten this condo for, you know, pennies and and it was couldn't keep both of them had to decide so we took a trip around the country and we made a decision picked the aspen one and he had had ties here he had been here after the war and skied with families Bertha pass and did all some of the first ski mountaineering in that area in in the after war era and so knew it knew it and had been to it and so it was just a natural to be here so and then how did the bakery actually? So like you had some uh, some restaurant. In fact, we used to go to Pinocchio's, right? Those were the yeah. days of the Shaft, Pinocchio's, yeah. those yeah. vacations. So I can relate to Pinocchio's. That was um, Italian, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Italian, it was yeah. Pizza it was and so you had some restaurant experience there. Well, and, and what kind of took place is um, once I went back, I'd come back and forth to Aspen. And, and then in 81, Susie and I got married up at Ashcroft here. Oh, and wow. Mark and the other partners were in town. And that next morning, we walked down to the old gas station that was on the corner, if you remember. Yeah. There was a little handwritten sign that said, for rent, in pencil. <laughs> I called the number, and the guy says, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving town in an hour if you want to meet. And we sat down <laughs> on the corner. We met, and we signed a lease in, a, in an hour. Oh, my god! And that kicked it off of us being in Aspen. And, I mean, it was just wow. one of these crazy things that we walked by that corner. And I had made a comment once before, if we're ever going to do a store announcement, it has to be right here. You know, just saying oh, it. Oh, my God. And it was. So what an amazing, fortuitous timing. Like, it was just like. We had a four-year lease. And we had to rebuild the building ourselves, kind of there, fix it up. Okay. And at the end of that lease, um, we didn't know if we were going to stay or not. And the Volk family, luckily, uh, picked us to stay in the corner. And we've been there. This is our 40th year. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's iconic on so many levels. And, you know, one of my favorite times at Paradise, I don't know if you guys would agree, but when the music students play out yeah. in front in the summers, which is just, again, iconic and part of such a, uh, a deep part of Aspen, you know, and, and the history. And I guess just, Mark, reflections. Um, I mean, you could talk about so many um, things when you look back 45 years on the business, the last 40 in Aspen. But I guess kind of main challenges and main rewards um, maybe some of those are the same things <laughs> when you can overcome the challenges. <laughs> but what get, are some you, highlights? You I don't guess? get the rewards without the challenges. No, right. you don't. True, you true. Don't. No, highlights just, just kind of. We've like, just been through years of it, and you know, different economic eras, and and uh, you know, we haven't had to deal with snow drought or any of those kind of things. But we've just watched Aspen go from us being the majority of our business being winters to the majority being summers. Right, and that's that just shift. a huge transition, and you know the biggest challenge in Aspen is uh, you know we've run our business other places, but that it's seasonal, and you have to have exceptional people doing you know an incredible job serving amazing products, and then you need to start over again, and you need to get that group again, and so you're doing it twice a year, and from a management standpoint, it's just an absolute challenge. It's a moving target, and so right. it's a uh, it's it's just exciting, you know. I think that the the biggest thing that you hear from anyone is, do you have trouble finding people? And, and my answer is always, uh, yeah, but we work harder at it than anything we do. And and right. it's not and it's not in how many ads we put in the paper, or what or how how we recruit. It's making it a great job, and making it such a great job that others will send their friends and and 
return to it. And when we get high school kids, they're back between college and they're back over and over and then they're back after. And, you know, we get eight years out of that. And then we have the wonderful people that come from all over the world. And early on, it was the Kiwis, and then it was Aussies, <laughs> and then it was Swedes, and then it was Argentina, Brazil. <laughs> Brazilians, and, yeah. And, and whatever the J-1 visa deal is, it's just been amazing. And, and the life and energy that they bring in with these uh, high school teams. And I, I remember uh, about 12 years ago before our uh, well, I do want to mention our partner and long-term manager, Diane Bronstein, who is a partner with us now in the New Deal. Yeah. When she started, we had one high school employee. We had had many before, but then it, th that area had gone down where the, 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 the deal was, you know, they're so hard to work around their schedules, and they're so immature, and it's so hard to do. Well, now we have something like 25 or 30 revolving high school and college <laughs> employees. And yes, it's hard to work around their schedules and yes, all that stuff, but the yeah. energy level that we get out right. and how that um, just fits in our environment and then, and, then, and then what that means to our customers. And it's just, I think the excitement is, the challenge is, is doing it and putting in the grunt work and working with the hard times when you were short and going in to do it. But then the reward is when you have a team that's clicking and they're doing it because they want to be there. Right. And they want to be with there with the other people that are there. As and then we go, now ah, we got this thing cooking. Well, it, it, and that's, if I can interject one thing, which yeah, yeah. You, can, you can give them the benefits of, you know, we give them health benefits and we give them ski pass and all that. But to keep someone here, you have to make it fun. And we have yeah. a, something we call the culture of excellence where we have to put on a show. We ha have to make it fun. We have to be passionate about what we do. We have to make it better every day, and lastly, we have to do the right thing. And when you do those things and you live those things, these kids, the young people with us, they pick up on that, and they realize that if they're late one day or sick or something, we gave them some slack and we helped them, they get that, and it becomes family. So that's what the way, like this summer, we had 53 employees. You know, and people say, how are you doing employees? Well, we could have used a few more, but we're pretty blessed to have 53 employees. Yeah. And it was because they became a big family, and they attract right. others. So. Right, so it sounds like the staffing is a big challenge, but also big. a huge reward. Because yeah. you become this family, it becomes fun. It's like a show, right? Yeah. We're, yeah. we're producing a show for people walking in every day, right? And we call and it showtime. Well, yeah. it's always showtime. Yeah, there you go. That thing, and I tell you what really changed this time is we had, uh, you saw you seen our pickup window. So we have this big window that yeah. now, and, and it never made sense before COVID because how, how would you go in and who would be first and how would that work? But when we were sending people outside for COVID, they'd come in the order and then we'd send them out okay. during that period. But yeah, We realized it. And so then we got the window. And so now people come in and they get their goodies and or order their ice cream. They order, they order, they don't get, and they go outside. And now they're waiting outside and they're relaxed. They're looking around. And, and usually when I, when I deliver a, a latte or something, I have to interrupt them. In the summer, I had to be quiet around the music students. <laughs> Jones, you know. And, and they're, whereas before, they're hovering at the door waiting. You know, one of the party is waiting for the order and the others are out there and it's tension. Now, right. it's just wonderful. And so that moved. The employees are looking out to the mountain and others can see in. We hired three or four people this summer just because they looked in with a comment like, you guys look like you're having fun in there. And then <laughs> da -da 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 -da, and they're working the next day. Or wow. someone's child is working the next day because, you know what, That's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. So being open was huge both ways, in and out. So yeah. that was just a just a bang to us. It almost felt like we were in a new restaurant. No, we're still 550 square feet. But it felt like we were part of the whole whole deal. We're down to just a minute, guys, and I just I wanted to give you an opportunity just to share what you'd like with our viewers. And Danny, we'll get uh, we'll give you each thirty seconds here. Um, the kind of closing thoughts, what you want to offer, kind of as we you know start another new year. Well, I think it's easy for me to do that. That's it. I'll just focus on why we signed another new ten-year lease. Yeah, you know I'm seventy-five basically. And I think that I'm going to sign a ten-year lease, but. <laughs> There's so much support, and what I wanted to do it for is I wanted to stay in business here but have a place that I'd be proud for our kids and grandkids to come to. Yeah. There's nothing more rewarding than my little 19-month-old grandson that comes up and gets an ice cream cone and goes out and smears it in his face. I mean, 
it just says everything, and I couldn't think of not being part of the community. So okay. for me, um, I, I've just got a new lease on life here, and at the end of, my, of this lease, we'll be there a half a century on the corner. Oh, my gosh. Guys, I thank you for being here. Where I, I wish we had a little more time. We'll have you back on yeah. come this summer season. Thank you for the cookies. I bake cookies for you guys. It's like a cookie exchange show. Oh, oh yeah. you take those. We'll take. The, we'll, it's a, well, you know, what there's some other goodies there? in there too. There, yeah. Okay. So thanks to oh, Mark yeah, and the Danny. Are in the thank bag. you for being here. Thank, thank you. Thanks for what you guys thanks do for, for our community. Us. Happy New Year to you guys. We'll have you back on this summer. And thank you guys for watching this week on the Local Show. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of The Local Show and Grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Hey there, Aspen Knights. It's John Oates here. Here we are at Grassroots, and you know what? This place has been going for 50 years, and as I look around, it could really use an upgrade. So please be generous, support Grassroots and their fun drive to uh, really make this place look a little cooler. Uh, it actually looks really cool. Maybe it should look more modern. No, that would be terrible. Just make it look better. Help support Grassroots. You know you love it. Support your community.